bank reconciliations being the primary thing to reconcile, those are going to be really uh, important. And we do those basically on a monthly, monthly basis. You've got rules. These are rules related to the bank, the bank. So we'll, uh, bank feeds. We'll talk about them later. And then you have your chart of accounts. Note we saw the chart of accounts up top here in the cog as well. But this is probably where you're going to go more often to find your chart of accounts. Also note that they've moved this chart of accounts around. You can possibly find it in multiple areas and they keep on kind of putting it in different places. So so, uh, you, so once you find it, uh, this, these are the underlying accounts uh, that, will be, that will be set up. We'll talk more about it later. All right, let's just go from top to bottom now. If I go into the dashboard, you got the get things done. So these are the tasks that they put up top. They sometimes put this flow chart in place uh, which is nice, but it's not as static as the flowchart in the desktop version has been over time. Uh, but that can help guide you. You've got the business overview. This gives you uh, some nice quick, a quick look at a few things like the profit and loss, the expenses, some nice charts. However, it's probably not your primary place that you're going to go. At least it's not for me because I open the reports uh, to look at most of this stuff in more detail. You've got a planner up top. This is going to help. This could help with cash flow. We might look at this a little bit more. It's an interesting kind of tool that can try to project what your cash flow is going to be out into the future, possibly taking into account the things that QuickBooks knows, such as your banking uh, uh, information when you're connected to the bank feeds and your accounts receivable and your accounts payable, possibly when you're expected to get, you know, get paid on that as well as invoices possibly that maybe you have reoccurring invoices that are going to happen in the future that you expect to be paid on that it might be able to pick up that information and give you a, an automatic kind of cash flow and we went to the transactions we already took a look at the transactions we already took a look at the sales side we looked at the expenses side we've got uh the the uh, customer leads says we can uh, curious how strong your customer relationships are connect your email to get a personal report on the health of your customer relationships with actionable recommendations for improvement so maybe we'll take a look at this a little bit more in a section it's got your customers up top the customers that are also in your sales tab your customer and then your marketing a new way to do research customers quickbooks and mailchimp are teaming up now mailchimp is a is an app that you might be able to connect to quickbooks possibly here and then and then that's usually helping you to send out your newsletters and, and do your email marketing so it's less manual work faster communication start marketing no design skills make conversions uh, relevant so that's interesting we might take a look at that more later you've got your reports now we opened up our primary reports from here balance sheet and the income statement the reports are another area that people get often very overwhelmed with because there's a whole lot of them but with the reports the general idea is is you've got two primary financial statement reports balance sheet income statement or profit and loss mainly all other reports are simply giving more detail expanding upon one or multiple items in the primary financial reports balance sheet and the income statement you've got your custom well so we'll talk more about that later you've got your custom reports so we can make custom reports and save them here we'll talk about that later you've got your management reports we'll talk more about them later as well we looked at the payroll you've got your time information so you got supercharge your time get ready to track time manage products and so much more with quickbooks time so when you when you get into the tracking of the time there's a couple different reasons you might need to track uh the time obviously you've got your payroll that you might be dealing with time tracking for and then you've got if you're in a job cost type of system and you're trying to bill based on uh time so this is a, another tool. We, I think we might have a section on this just to look at it in a little bit more detail where, where it views your team's location, manage time for projects, and track time uh, from any device. And then you've got your time entries over here, over here. And then you've got your budgets. Note that we saw the budgets had a drop down. You could find them up top in the drop down budgeting here. But it says plan better with budgets. Now budgets aren't really there the accountant will be involved in budgets but budgets isn't what you normally think of as the primary f 
first thing that the accountant does because the accountant is doing usually the financial statements creation from past transactions. The reason budgeting is a little bit different is that it does still use the accounting format, but you need more input from the owner of the business, from management, so you can forecast what the budget will be. So the accountant can make budgets based on past information, but to really get a, a budget that's really trying to target something, the accountant needs to be working with management to create a budget. And so, and the, and, and, and the, if we data input that information into QuickBooks, then we can get these nice reports that will then compare the actual information versus budget information as time passes. Taxes has to do with sales tax and 1099. Uh, sales tax is is going to be like a usage tax in the United States, and it's uh, it's QuickBooks has a pretty good system to be able to set it up at this point, which helps you to notify where your location is and what taxes you might be subject to. So that's a great tool. We'll set up the sales tax in future presentations. My accountant, so an accountant team can be your best business partner. So you can invite your accountant. Now, of course, many small bit in many business, small, you know, small businesses, mid-sized business, any business is going to need to deal with their accountant at least for taxes. So you can invite your accountant to get access to your financial statements for easy uh, transfer of data so that they have the financial statements and possibly more to then do what they need to do at the end of the year, possibly taxes, possibly uh, financial reports. Banking, so this is like QuickBooks marketing. Uh, we, we partner with lenders. So if you needed a loan, future funding through uh, QuickBooks Capital, so funding information. Commerce, uh, seamlessly connect your sales channels. So again, you might have, if you're in the specialized area of eBay, Amazon, or Shopify, and you sell stuff, inventory on them, then that's a whole kind of separate world of how can I get that information into QuickBooks? How much information should I be pulling into QuickBooks? What should I not be pulling into QuickBooks? We might have a section that will specialize on that in more detail. And then you have your apps uh, down below that if you have any kind of add-on apps, you can uh, search for them in this area. Be careful on the add-on apps. There's a lot of great stuff out there, but you want to make sure that you're you're uh, picking what you want and the and the add on and the add on apps so you can search for the apps here and uh so that's that so that's the general overview we'll dive into more of these in more detail in future presentations